Hi, I'm Amy Shannon. Many of you may know me as an author, a book reviewer, um, mom, friend, um, family member. Um, I wanted to take this chance uh, to, while I was thinking about it, um, to not just promote my um, special edition book of uh, Fractured Tears, A Struggle for Justice. Um, it's going to um, be available only in the month of November on um, Kindle. Uh, so it's on Amazon, it's on for pre-order, but I am only releasing it uh, from November 1st to November 30th. Um, October is National Domestic Violence Awareness Month. It's also um, Breast Cancer Awareness Month. Two very important causes. Um, I decided to re-release in just for a special edition, um, Fractured Tears. Uh, Fractured Tears originally looks like this. Um, it's a story, a fictional story uh, about Anna Coleman, who um, is a victim of domestic violence. And I created her a ficti fictitious life, but she went through similar events that I did. So it was kind of telling my story, but not necessarily having the whole story be mine. I fictionalized a lot of it. Names have been changed, situations have been changed. Um, her, uh, her thing of or her career, excuse me, um, has been changed uh, and her, her, her life has been changed. Um, so um, Fractured Tears, A Struggle for Justice. Uh, recently, I did change the front cover on um, the uh, original um, Kindle book. So it's a little bit different. Um, the letters are, are different. Um, the face on the book, is the same. It's my face. Um, if you look very closely, you could see my face, um, what I looked like the day after it happened. Um, I always call it the incident. Um, and anyone who has even once been pushed, shoved, swore at, hair pulled, kicked, punched by someone who was supposed to love them, knows the feeling of heartbreak. Um, and I, Mine happened 16 years ago, coming up in November. And I am reminded of it every day because of my brain injuries. And it seems like just when I think um, enough has happened to my body, um, something more happens. Um, two years ago, I had just a tremor disorder. And now I have uh, several movement disorders. Um, there's so many things with the brain they don't know why but when they do an MRI and there's this area on several parts of my brain that basically are scars from what happened to me and so that affects the brain in ways they never know what's exactly going to happen but my um, story I tell it because I think it's important for people to really know that just because something is great looking on the outside, you know, they see front doors, a nice, nice house, nice yard, that, that, that doesn't mean that what's going on inside is all right. I created um, Fractured Tears, a special edition, um, because I want to honor all domestic violence survivors um, and those 
who have passed. When you hear about a domestic violence situation, 99% of the time it is because someone, the victim, has been killed or victim fought back and killed the accuser. And that can be a very slippery slope um, with the justice system. I did uh, for my book, Fractured Tears, I, um, since I'm only open, um, creating it in a Kindle format, I did have a proof copy of a paperback um, and I have it right here. This is my proof copy. Um, and it tells Anna's story and at the end, it tells my story. And I even put in the timeline, probably can't see it really well, of what happened and the steps, the different areas that had to be done in order for me to get justice. I left out the names of family and friends and people that I dealt with um, within the justice system. Um, to protect privacy. I did dedicate this book in memory of Albany County, uh, former Albany County legislator, Ann Camilla. She stood by me and helped me get through the justice system. And I think that too many people judged her on the way she died, rather on the way that she lived. To me, she was a friend and it was a great loss when, when she passed away. Um, but I dedicate this book to her, her memory. Um, back then, my name was Amy Lukowski. On November 2nd, 2005, my husband, Robert, uh, decided that I should die. And in a way, that Amy did die, and I became someone else. There was this split second when I knew that I was going to die. He was choking the life out of me after he had beaten me for over 45 minutes and he decided that he was done. He just wanted to end it. And at that point, so did I. But then they say that your life flashes through your eyes when you're, uh, you know, you're gonna, when you come to a near death experience. Um, my death flashed before my eyes. And I did not want my children to find me dead on the living room floor. My boys were very young men. And then, so I fought back. I escaped. It took a long time to escape. And I hid because I knew he'd be following me or sending someone to get me. And I found refuge at the state police barracks um, near uh, about five miles from where I live. Uh, I was just about to give up when one of the officers found me on the back doorstep. Anyway, It's funny because I realized that there were so many different kind of people. When you're um, when they think you're a strong person, and then all of a sudden they think, "Oh, because you got almost killed by your husband." One, what did you do wrong? Or you should have been strong enough. How come you weren't strong enough? How could you let him do that to you? I have to say at the time, 
I was about 130 pounds, 5'4", and he was 300 pounds and stood at 6'3". And he had power and weight behind him and I didn't. I think even if I was a little bit heavy like I am now, it wouldn't have mattered. I got tired. I tried to not only defend myself, but protect myself. And then it was too tiring to do both. So I just did what I could to protect myself. To this day, I don't remember everything because there was parts of me that part of the time I was unconscious and I don't know for how long. And then there were those people that they didn't know what to say, so they didn't say anything at all. They just turned away. Or there were friends that were friends with the both of us, and some took his side and some took my side. Some of my family were led to believe that I died and no one could find out information. I was in the hospital for eight days. I was under um, a protected patient program. So my, I didn't have a name, I was just a number. So he couldn't find me if he got out. It took a long time to get justice. He was in jail, then he was out of jail. And then I had to go to the news. And then, lucky me, they finally did a grand jury date. I testified. I met the officer, the state trooper who took care of my children. And I met the detective who interviewed my husband. They had no idea who I was when I walked in because they didn't recognize me. That's how bad my face was. But it was my heart that hurt. A few months before this happened, we had, um, we knew our marriage was rocky and it had been rocky in the past. And somehow we always managed to work through it and come out the other side. So we decided together that we would try it one more time. And then the day before he tried to kill me, I noticed that he was using hardcore drugs where I thought he was falling into depression. I'm not a prude, it was fine for him to use marijuana. I didn't care, that wasn't a big deal to me. Um, and then he was using hardcore drugs and I didn't even know which ones they were. And I told him he had to choose his drugs or his family, he couldn't have both. We had three little kids that we had to take care of and I wasn't working to support his drug habit. That was November 1st, November 2nd. I came home from paying bills and running errands and he decided it was time for me to die. The only thing I can say, I know that you, you could feel alone. And to this day, sometimes I just feel alone. And when you survive, people tell you to get over it. It's not so easy to get over it. Especially if you suffer mental or physical problems from that day. I have PTSD and I didn't think anything about PTSD. I thought it was something that was specific to people in the military. And I understand why they would have it, but I didn't understand why I would have it.
if you know something about someone, help them. See how you can help them. Not everyone will accept your help. Um, that is just the way it is. It's people's options. Some people think they deserve it. Some people think, oh, well, that person is nicer than he is mean or she is mean because it doesn't matter uh, gender or non-gender. Anyone can be abused. If they, one thing that I should have seen and I was always told, uh, judge your, your future mate on how that person treats their parent, their mother, their father. I should have known, I guess. Um, I didn't, I forgave him for a lot of things. And, but I know when my marriage ended, I knew it was going to end in some kind of explosion, and I just didn't know what it was. And I knew it wasn't forever. And I knew that one last time was not going to work, but I had hoped it would. I struggled through the justice system, and I found support where I didn't even realize I had it. If you need help, have somebody. There are domestic violence hotlines. If you just have some place to go without that person knowing where it is, have a safety kit in a location that only you know of. Safety kits, sometimes they're like a cell phone, there are car keys, uh, money could be buried in a behind a bush in your backyard or the neighbor's backyard. There are different kinds of safety kits depending on if you need to go, you need to go. And though I knew he would not hurt my children, I knew it deep in my heart. If I wasn't around, he could have done it to me. Children or no children, be safe, get help. And those who want to help, don't pity, support. Listen. Listen to what they're saying. Don't turn away from their bruises. Because the bruises on the outside aren't as bad as the bruises on the inside. Remember, just because October is National Domestic Violence Awareness Month, it happens year round. And with the pandemic, it's gotten worse. It's almost tripled. So I just wanted to put this out there. You can read my story at the end of Fractured Tears. Read Anna's story as well. I didn't have to do a lot of research, but I did research. But a lot of the things that happened to Anna happened to me. And at the end, just a warning, there are photos of what I used to look like, what I looked like on November 2nd, November 3rd, November 8th, November 10th. And then it just kept going. It took forever. The heel on the outside. Anyways, thank you for listening. You know, if you know someone who's in trouble, do what you can to help them, even if it's supporting whatever decision they make. You don't, I recommend calling the police, but you don't have to. Just be safe and get away. Don't stay just because he pays the bills. He has the money. And if you have to make a plan, get yourself 
you know, familiarize yourself with things that happen at the household that maybe only he does. How he pays bills, you know, how he does certain things, how he fixes things, how he acts, how he does many different things. He's got things, she's got things, whatever they do. Learn because you can take care of yourself. If I had one question, and I do, that I don't have the answer to, is if he loved me so much, how could he hate me just as much? This has been Amy Shannon. Thank you. And please, take care of yourself.